This is where Jesus preached and performed his miracles, where he lived and died and lived again. Walk with us where Jesus walked. Familiar landmarks, little change from the days of Jesus. Galilee, Capernaum, Nazareth, the River Jordan, the Mount of Olives, Jerusalem, Mount of Temptation, the Garden of Gethsemane, places so little changed that events of sacred history seem to unfold once more to our view and bring new meaning to familiar scriptures. Bethlehem. Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth, that is to be the ruler in Israel. And Mary brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. At Bethlehem, within the Church of the Nativity, is the cave traditionally associated with this sacred birth. Perhaps in these same nearby fields, Shepherds abided in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. One hundred kilometers to the north is the city where Jesus grew to maturity. And Jesus dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Although present-day Nazareth may bear little resemblance to the Nazareth of Jesus' time, echoes still linger. Buying, selling, bargaining. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year for the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, Jesus went up to Jerusalem with them after the custom of the feast. In Jerusalem, one can view this replica of the temple where the boy Jesus was found going about his father's business, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions and where all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Part of the Western Wall, the so-called Wailing Wall, is all that remains of the ancient walls that surrounded Herod's temple. Jews the world over revere this as a place of worship. Nearby, the Muslim edifice known as the Dome of the Rock now stands on the traditional site of the temple. Below the dome itself lies the massive rock which is believed to be the foundation for the altar where the priests of Jesus' time offered sacrifices. This rock is the natural summit of Mount Moriah traditionally accepted as the site where Abraham offered the ram instead of his son Isaac, where King David offered sacrifice, where Elijah knelt to pray, 
and where the Ark of the Covenant rested in King Solomon's temple. As Jesus grew up in Nazareth, he was instructed in the trade of his father and found time to observe his fellow men. Time to become familiar with God's creations. And he increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Jesus left the quiet familiarity of Nazareth to go into the valley of the Jordan in the wilderness of Judea. Then cometh Jesus unto John to be baptized of him. After his baptism, the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descended upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. West of the city of Jericho rises the Mount of Temptation, accepted since Byzantine times as the scene where Satan tried to tempt Jesus. This forbidding area has been a retreat for fasting and meditation for centuries. The scriptures state that after Jesus had resisted the enticings of Satan, the devil left him and angels came and ministered to him. Calm at times, stormy at others, the Sea of Galilee still yields her bounties to fishermen, just as when Jesus walked along the shore and saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. He said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. They were the first to be chosen. Going on from thence, he saw two others, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And they immediately left their ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. The ruins of this synagogue at Capernaum on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee are believed to be on the site of an ancient synagogue where Jesus taught. He also taught by the seaside in Galilee, drawing on the familiar and the commonplace. His parables evoked images drawn from the lilies of the field and birds of the air, the first leaves of the fig trees, the orchards and trees, and the humble occupations of the Galileans. Jesus taught, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore, and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. In the hills of Galilee, Jesus also taught. The traditional site of the Mount of Beatitudes slowly rises above the Sea of Galilee, where his comforting words seem to echo still. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Here he gave the world his timeless guidelines for a tranquil society. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. This simple mountainside reflects the powerful words remaining from the past. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Later, the disciples came to Jesus asking, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. From Galilee, Jesus traveled as far north as Caesarea Philippi, where one of the sources of the Jordan River is found. It was near here that Jesus asked his disciples, Whom do ye say that I am? The answer was Peter's firm declaration, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Between Galilee and Jerusalem is the location of Jacob's well, now enclosed as a shrine. This was already a sacred place in the days of Jesus, being near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. It may have looked like this when Jesus rested here during one of his journeys and spoke those memorable words to the Samaritan woman. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. He then declared that he was the expected Messiah. The shepherd knows each of his flock, and they know him today as in the days of Jesus. The plain but effective analogies used by the master teacher evoke vivid thoughts as they did anciently when he said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. There is in Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Here Jesus healed a man who had been infirm for 38 years, saying, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. There is general agreement among scholars that this is the actual site of this miracle. Just outside Jerusalem, on the southeastern slope of the Mount of Olives, is the small village of Bethany, where Jesus loved to visit. Here, Jesus performed another great miracle. His friend Lazarus had died, and Jesus was sent for. By the time Jesus arrived, Lazarus had lain in the grave four days, but Jesus reassured the mourners, saying, 
I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The traditional tomb where Lazarus was laid was a typical one, hewn out of the rock. Jesus directed that the entrance stone be removed. Then he called, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. This miracle, like the others of Jesus, was soon noised abroad. As Jesus' fame grew, so grew opposition from the chief priests and Pharisees, apprehensive that he would undermine the established order. And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Travelers from the east first viewed the holy city from the top of the Mount of Olives. Here we recall how Jesus yearned for the city, saying, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Each year, a procession reenacts the triumphal entry down the Mount of Olives, when a multitude of disciples escorted Jesus into Jerusalem, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. In an upper room, Jesus and his disciples dined together for the last time. In these surroundings, one is moved to recall the events of that night and the poignant statement of the Savior. Verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After this same manner also he took the cup, saying, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This simple act set the pattern for the administration of the sacrament as a sacred rite of Christian churches since that time. Gethsemane, a name synonymous with sorrow. Here, Jesus knelt and poured out his soul. O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. His torment 
is mirrored in the trunks and limbs of these centuries-old olive trees, which may have sprung from the roots of the same trees which witnessed the Savior's suffering and subsequent betrayal and arrest. This step path dates from almost two centuries before Christ. Jesus may have traveled this route in the hands of his captors after leaving Gethsemane. Many believe that the palace of Caiaphas once stood on this site, now occupied by the church of St. Peter of Galacanto. The name Galacanto means cockcrow, commemorating that unhappy night when Peter denied knowing his Lord. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. The place of the skull. Many believe that this hill is Calvary or Golgotha, where the crucifixion took place. At the third hour, they crucified Jesus. And with him, they crucified two thieves, one on the right hand and the other on the left. The sun was darkened. was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. Typical in location and appearance to the tomb described in the Gospel of John as the burial place of Jesus is the garden tomb. Three days afterwards, very early in the morning of the first day of the week, the women came to the sepulchre to anoint the body of Jesus. Instead, they were greeted by a young man in a long white garment who announced, he is not here. He is risen. Jesus showed himself, first to Mary Magdalene, and afterward to the Twelve. For 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus visited with his disciples to instruct them more thoroughly in the gospel and organization of the kingdom of God. He told them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. On his last visit, he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go. Two thousand years have come and gone since Jesus, the Savior of all mankind, consecrated this land by his presence. Today, millions of his faithful followers 
are looking forward to the time when he will come again. In the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory, as he promised. And every person can find peace and joy by following in his footsteps.